Yes, look at that, look at that. <laughs> what, like, what is that? That's my jacuzzi. Oh, get out of town. <laughs> Where's your water supply? You have to stop and get this it? This oven right here. This is where I roast all my hot dogs and sausages. And oh, stuff. get out of town, man. And this is my little refrigerator right here. Now, is that electric? Yeah. Uh, well, you, you plug it into the um, cigarette lighter. Okay. All this right. Like this right here. This is my little grocery right here. Got my little hot dog. And, oh, that was she want to. Yeah. <laughs> she smells something. Yeah. Uh -oh, she ain't want that. Man, what was she trying to Okay. You got my little pineapple and my sardine and cashew, peanut butter and jelly. This is my holy book right here. This is my Quran and this is my Bible. And I keep them right there close to my head so I can keep them in mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, all right. This is my library right here. I got my, uh, I got uh, some old, I got my dictionary that I, uh, I'm terrible at spelling. Uh -huh. And uh, these are just some other books from teachings of the um, Islam. And this is my uh, Bible. And this is the book right here that I've been intending to finish read. This is the book by um, um, Reverend. Um, the fire you can't put out, Reverend Shuttlesworth. Oh, yes, indeed, man. Sign of Leon Frazier. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I made that cover right there. Um, okay. Out of some newspaper. All right. Yep, and uh, that's about it. This, I just got my now clothes. You pray in here or outside or I just depending on where I, you are? Now, this is my little, let me show you how to do it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, puppy. So you got these weights with you so yeah, you I stay got, strong. Huh? Yeah, man. This is how I make my prayer right here. Right here, just like this right here. All right, now. You got to get a master his. That's right. Yeah, he won't give me mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll yeah, give it to you, but there ain't going to be nothing that you want. Yeah, well, you sure are getting it now, man. He gave you uh, an excellent... Uh, opportunity to go and do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is my uh, little entertainment. You be jamming up in here. Jamming up in here. This is my uh, GPS and um, oh, messaging. You, you have every... five hours and thirty-six minutes of remaining drive time. I'm only allowed to drive. Um, 11 hours a day, so I got five more hours left to drive. Okay, so it it only count when you are moving? Uh, no. like, are you wasting drive time now when you sit still? Well, it, it depends. You got 14 hours to work in a day, so, uh, it, yeah. Well, you, you're not actually killing drive time. Yeah. Um, but you're killing the hours that you have for the week, because you have, like, 70 hours in a week that you can work. Okay. And so, um, but long as you long as you're off duty, it don't it don't go against your um, um, your drive time. But it count against the hours that you have in a day to work. Right. Right. So um, that's pretty much it. I turned this house into a home. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the trips you've had? Uh... Uh, I've been up to um, <clears throat> Arkansas, uh, Kentucky, uh, Ohio, Michigan. West Virginia, um, Atlanta, uh, Mississippi, and I'm headed down to Louisiana now, so I've been trucking it. All right, now <laughs> I, I thought you went to California one time. Oh, I went. To, I did go to California, but it wasn't. It was with my trainer when I. Oh, was, okay. When I was with my trainer, uh, me and him went to California. You know, Texas, Mexico, all that through there, and man. Well, I bet that was some beautiful Ooh, experience. Man, huh? it, it is just to get out and see. You know. People in different places living differently from, uh, and, and and it's a saying that ain't no place like home, but everybody got their home in different places. Right. And you see how different people, you know, how they live in different places. Like I just came out to um, Kentucky, and everybody just like down off in the bowl of these, you know, valleys and stuff. And then right. you go up in in um, West, I mean, up to Virginia, and everybody living up on top of the hills. And, Right. And so then you come down here, you know, you got a little bit of it both. So, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a good experience. And, um, 
it's one you know that um, for anybody out there looking for something to do is definitely an opportunity that you can take advantage of and I, don't, I mean, you just get to see the God's country. <laughs> All right, now you bit off this challenge. Any regrets? Uh, no, I, I, I ain't had no regrets because uh, anything that you, if you regret something, you did something wrong. So I think I made a good move here. I always wanted to have my CDL, and so I got them. And um, I also still got my license to sell insurance. And I'm, just, I'm using this as a tool to help pay my way through school and stuff. And at the same time, get that experience because um, this here is I'm using this as a um, as like a um, you know a, a backup plan. Right. So I mean, because it's like you can go in any state, in any country, in any city, and look in a newspaper, and they gonna you gonna see a driver's warning sign. So you almost always without I mean never without the opportunity for employment, uh, you know, to make some money to get where you need to be right and right. I, <clears throat> even um a lot of times you you have to uh like me starting out right now the money ain't all that good but like i was um, telling my mother the other day and my sister you know experience trumps you know uh finances in the be in the beginning oh yeah because so, the, that's laying your groundwork for the future right 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 so um now you drive for a company now rather than a private owned truck right right I, i'm with this company swift here and they um you know they um gave me an opportunity and taught me and trained me everything and you know and gave how me long was that training the training actually it was a three weeks course um you, well, actually, you, you're three weeks in like class and backing up, and they teach you all the skills of backing and safety and all that for three weeks. Then, uh, and you don't get paid for that, but after the three weeks up, and um, you go out with your trainer on the road, and then they paying you um, the minimum wage for whatever your state pay. They pay you that um, for the six weeks or however long it take you to. Uh, get you 240 uh, driving hours behind the wheel. You got to have 240 driving hours behind the wheel um, before you complete your, um, before you come back home and get your own truck with your mentor. Right. Okay, so you are strictly on your own now? This is your rig? Right. I'm on my own right now. Okay. All you right. put me here. <laughs> <laughs> Hang out there, buddy. Yeah, that's going to eat this up, man. He, he love riding that one. There. Ain't no doubt about that. Okay, so man, uh, what would you would you say that the training is complicated? Can a lot of these young brothers out of here who don't have anything to do, can they get busy and go and and take on a chore like this and be successful at it? They, they, they can. I mean, you can do whatever you put your mind to. Um, really not home. Like I say, it's a good opportunity for a person that, that's struggling to find something to do. You can get out there and um, have your fun and see a lot of things. And like me, this summer when my um, son get out of school, I mean, he just dying to go, you know, and I'm dying to take him, you know, so because I, I want him to see that um, it's more to life than just being like in a, in a one, uh, you know, closeted in in one area, you know. What's the most challenging thing out here about this kind of a job? Oh man, watching out for other people, man. Cause you have got some insane acts out here. <laughs> they will run over you and you in a big truck and they'll take the highway from you. Uh -huh. So I mean, you got a lot of people doing, I mean, um, and you just constantly in, in that um, environment. But the main thing that I learned, I mean, my daddy was a trucker and he always told me, don't get in no hurry slow down and take your time and you know it, it, whatever you got gonna get there you know just play it safe and don't hurt yourself and don't you know don't hurt nobody else so that's my that's the way I keep it in mind I, you know, I don't be in no hurry to, if, I, if I'm running late I can always get on this computer here and you know type in what I need to type in tell them I'm gonna be an hour late I'm gonna be whatever however late I need to be you know to right. make that safe Right. So, and, and explain this drive time to me, you know, because some people think that you can just get out here and rush anywhere you want to rush, but you have controls on your driving hours, right? Right. This right here, if you look at this right here, 
it say um, 70 hours. That's how many hours that you can perform work on duty. This right here is 14 hours on duty. You can only work 14 hours within a day. And right here is uh, 11 hours. You can only drive 11 hours in the day. And you can have a on duty is, is 14 hours, which include um, like you're checking your truck and make sure it's ready to go. And um, you know, brakes if you need brakes. And 11 hours is actually the amount of time that you can sit behind the wheel in one day. You can only drive for 11 hours. So how before you can get 11 hours, as far as you can go. Okay. And um, now after you do the, um, after the 14 hours or, or the 11 hours is up, whichever one come first, then you have to take a, a 10 hour break. And then you're not allowed to drive a motor truck within that 10 hour break until um, your 10 hours up. Then after your 10 hours up, then you start back with a 14 hour uh, per day on duty and you start with your 11 hours driving time. Okay. So um, again, you can only work 70 hours in a week. Now after this 70 hours right here goes all the way down, or you run out that 70 hours, you have to be, you have to stop driving for 34 hours to reset your whole 70 hours. So you have to do a 34 hour reset after you drive for your 70 hours within a week. And it's federal regulated, so you know the government say that they're trying to keep. Uh, people from getting sleepy and having crashes and you know all that kind of stuff. But right. These, these right here are not in all trucks, but they say by next year they're gonna have to be all logs and everything you do is gonna have to be electronic. So every and all the, the tracking system and all that they track your loads and. Now all go. of that goes back to your company. All of it go back to the company and back to the government. So now, do you go, go? Do your company know when you are driving and when you're sitting still? Oh yeah, they got it. They know this. They know this truck right here, right now. They got satellites on it. Now, how are you guys treated generally by the troopers on the roadway? Uh, the tr uh, as long as you um, ain't acting crazy and running all off the road, you 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 don't hardly see nobody getting bothered by the state trooper. A lot of the truckers in the, um, you know, they had a CB, so they communicate. You know, they. They tell you if a police up the road, or a state troop up the road, or you know if, if a traffic jam or um, somebody done crashed, it, you know they tell you the right lane closed down. You need to get in your left lane, or your left lane closed down. You need to get in the right lane. Right. And so um, they communicate a lot over the. Okay, how, how do you truckers get along out here? Is the uh, relationship yeah. among truck truckers pretty healthy? Well, it, it, uh, uh, I ain't ran into no problem, but you know, you, you got your you got your fools everywhere you go. You know, you got people um, arrogant, and you know, people. But for the most part, you know, I've had you know people come up there and help me. I was in uh, <coughs> I was in um, Virginia the other day, last week, and man, I was catching the blues trying to get the the, the weight balanced on the trailer. Right. You can have you can have so much. You can have like you can't have over thirty four thousand on your on your on your um, trailer, and you can't have but thirty four thousand on your tractor wheels right here. Okay. And you can only have like twelve up here on your front on your drive wheel. But I was catching and trying to balance that slide that them trailers up and down. Man, I sweat it up and down. And there was a guy that said, "Man, I went back in there and uh, he said, "Man, I, I've been seeing you out there." He said, "Man, I'm gonna give you a hand." <laughs> I said, "Man, brother, I sure appreciate." <laughs> Hey, that was a welcome help, oh, huh? Man, that was a welcome help. Man, I drove around through them scales about 10 times, sliding that trailer, pulling up, getting out, running, doing all this stuff, man, because I, I said, man, I'm new, and I, he said, man, he said, uh, he said, I was too. <laughs> and he said, he said, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you get it straight. So he helped me get it straight, man, and I appreciate it. I said, man, you want to drink it? Anything you want in that snow, you go in there and get it. <laughs>